Bokar Tov. Go ahead and say a blessing for the coffee and things I'm going to be drinking during this uh, brief but yet direct uh, shiur for this morning. Baruch Atah Adonai Elohim Melech HaOlam Shehakol Nihia Bidvaro Welcome, welcome to the Ways of Israel. We are continuing our studies in the Sefer HaIkarim as we now have arrived at chapter 20 of the first book of Rabbi Joseph Albo, an incredible um, Spanish Jewish um, sage, as it were, or leader of the Jewish community, who basically was very much affected by the Inquisition and the thoughts that came out of the different discussions uh, thereof. And one of the things that uh, Albo puts forward is this idea that in fact there are some things that are considered fundamentals and yet are not according to his opinion. And so we're looking at Rabbi Joseph Alba in this regard, and of course we're doing this in the in the memory of a good friend of mine, Rabbi um, Joseph Albo um, had a descendant who apparently from Spain went to Cuba, believe it or not, and many of the Albos went to Cuba. <coughs> There's many family members, if you look it up, uh, do a search on all the Albos, fascinating. But this one particular gentleman who was very dear to us and to the family and to many of you who are in the Hollywood area will remember uh, Yehuda Natan, uh, also known as George Alba or Georgie, we would call him. He served as a Metro police officer in Miami-Dade and had a daughter, a um, beautiful daughter, who also lives, I believe, in South Miami. And her, her name is Samantha Albo. And I know she cared a lot for her father. And so we just wanted to make this series in memory of um, Albo. A very, very unique sense of humor. Uh, to this day, we can all remember and cherish it. I know uh, David Mizrahi there at, uh, at the pizza shop. Uh, also was very fond of him, had a very strong connection with him. He was the Mashpia, I'm sorry, Mashgia for the pizza shop there under the ORB. So let's continue this morning uh, with this series that we've started. Um, and we are now in chapter 20 of Sefer Hai Karim, Sefer of the Fundamentals, fundamentals according to Rabbi Joseph Albo. Now, a, th a thing perceived by an unusual, popular, and untrustworthy person, or by, by a number of persons of superior powers of comprehension, or by an unusual large number of persons, is more likely to be to satisfy the mind of its reality and be firmly believed than a thing not so accredited. For this reason, God desired that the Torah should be given through Moses with great publicity in the presence of a mighty multitude of 600,000 people. For according to the wise men of the Kabbalah, this number includes all of the physiognomies and hence the publicity could not be greater though the numbers of the person have been multiplied many, many times. According to the rabbis, the Revelations was published before the whole world. Commenting on this verse, the Lord came from Sinai and rose from Seir and unto them. And he shined forth from Mount Paran, and they say, Why Seir? Why Paran? The answer is that God offered the Torah to all the world who refused to accept it. Then Israel came and accepted it. The meaning is that since there were 70 nations in the world, the text of the Bible mentions only Seir and Paran. It is clear that the reference is not to Mount Seir, in the wilderness of Paran, but to the whole world, knowing that the founder of the religion would arise in the future in Seir. This obviously is making a reference to the Edomite or Christianity. The people of Edom and those associated with them. And in Paran, the people of Ishmael and those related to them. Two nations, including the whole world, and both descended from a Abraham the first true believer. God published before these nations his revelation of the Torah to Israel, pointing out 
to them the revelation of a divine law must be published very widely else it's not divine this is because an order which passes between God and the prophet alone leaves a suspicion or doubt in the minds of others even those living in the same generation not to mention those who come after thus even the case of Moses the Israelites did not fully believe in his prophetic character until the day of the revelation of Sinai when they heard the voice speaking to him as we saw before now I mentioned uh, in particular how Rabbi Alba mentions both Seer and Paran as referring to Christianity and Islam because these were to be the two who were to carry forth as it were the message of what the children of Israel had received at Sinai. The Torah is for all but not all received it. This is the reason why the Torah was not given completely to Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. They should command their children after them to keep the way of the Lord. For though the tradition should be handed down by them, continuously from father to son, suspicion or doubt might occur to those who came in the future generations. Because those who received the law first were individuals. The case is different where the thing is clearly perceived by a very great number of persons, embracing many wise and intelligent men, representing a great variety of opinions. This is the reason why the Torah was given through Moses with such great publicity. In order, namely, as it says, as, like I said before, says Rabbi Abo, that no suspicion or doubt should remain in the minds of the recipients and their associates, nor in the minds of those who come after, so that the tradition may be firm and true as possible to make. And by the way, this is the reason why we hold that this fundamental of what Albo is speaking of is universal in that it embraces the creation of the Edomites or the Christian faith and the Islamic faith as being co-participators with the message to get the idea out of one God. And there's one Torah. Obviously, according to Islam, the Torah we have, according to them, is not all sound. They accuse us of having basically changed the Torah, and that we will see in, in a couple of um, videos that that is completely erroneous. Christian religion says, no, no, they've got it right, but they don't got the right person. In other words, we are the fulfillment of what the Torah was referring to. <clears throat> So you have these two that stands as supposed representative of the one God through the world. And yet the most ancient one, the most classical one, the most authentic of all these three would be the Jewish faith. This is the meaning of the saying of our rabbis in the, in the treaties of, of Boda Zara. And I mentioned this because uh, I spoke about passage that's found in, in Tractate of Odazara, chapter 3, regarding how the, all the nations would convert to the faith of Israel. And yet, God will laugh at them. Why? Because they come to God with a lot of, you know, um, conditions or in, uh, intentions that is not correct. In the future, God will take the Torah in his bosom and say that all those who occupy themselves with this come and get their reward. At once, all the nations of the world will come crowding before him, pell-mell, as it says, and all the nations are gathered together and the people are assembled. Among them can declare this. This means that the Torah, the rabbis mean to say that in the future, God will bring all of the idolatrous nations to justice because they did not fulfill the divine law. Then we are told in a sequel that God will say to them, Wherewith have you busied yourself? And they will reply that they were concerned themselves with social welfare, as is recounted at length in the Agadic passage of the cited passage above. And finally God will reply and say, all of you that was not for social welfare, but for your own selfish ends. 
It wasn't for social welfare. It wasn't for the good of humanity. It was for your own selfish interest. It is there anyone among you who can declare this? Is there anyone among you who can say that he fulfilled the divine Torah? And then they will reply in turn that as the Israelites are to be rewarded for observing the law which they received by tradition, so they should be rewarded for fulfilling their law which was also received by tradition. And God will then reply, Who among you can declare this and announce to us former things? Let them bring their witnesses that they may be justified that the meaning is that the nations who claim that they have relied on their tradition must tell us former things. They must tell us about the principles of their religion, which they accepted and upon which they relied. They must tell us as to whether they were perceived by the senses with great publicity, as were the principles of the law of Moses. Let them, be, let them bring their witnesses, that they may be justified that those who receive the law may hear and say it is truth, as those who receive the law of Moses can produce their witnesses, because the principles of their religions were published before an assembly of 600,000 persons who received the Torah, and the text concludes, Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord. All Israel are witnesses of the divine revelation of the Torah, for they heard the voice of the Lord speaking to them from the Ten Words. And words are the what's known as the Ten Commandments or the Ten Sayings. The words in my servants whom I have chosen refers to Moses, who is called the servant of the Lord. All of you are witnesses that the Torah is divine. And by the way, this did not happen in the same manner with these other two that I mentioned earlier. Neither the founder of Christianity nor of Islam can purport to say that, the, that Hashem said, that God says this of them in particular. This is a wonderful interpretation of the verses according to the idea of the rabbis that the text cited deals with reward that follows upon the fulfillment of Torah as a whole. And it is true, for since the principles of the Torah were declared with great publicity, no doubt can it possibly occur concerning the truth thereof. Hence, one should have a firm faith in the law of Moses, especially so since it's the principles are so clear that no doubt is possible. As we have explained in uh, the previous videos. Now, here ends chapter 20 of book 1. But we're, Rabbi Abel continues in the concept of belief in God and his Torah that brings man to eternal happiness and causes his soul to cleave to spiritual substance. And this is proved by the experience, as we know, from the continuous tradition. And this, by the way, is how even those who wish to be part of the children of Israel would need to grasp hold, cleave, to that spiritual substance which is in the Torah. And this is what makes a person who's not part of the tribe, part of the tribe. And here we have the declaration of Ruth, who basically is the, the perfect prototype of a righteous Gentile being converted by God after having a relationship with a Jewish person who then reaffirms her commitment to the faith that he presented to her because she was converted prior to marrying him and therefore reaffirmed when Naomi, her mother-in-law, said, you know, stay here with your people. Go back. And she said, no, I will not do such a thing. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Wherever you go, I shall go. Whatever happens to you, let it happen to me. And therefore she cleaved not only to the God of Naomi and her children and of the people, but she cleaved also to Naomi, saying, don't, don't leave me here. This is not my people. You are my people. What a beautiful story. The fact that she basically transmit this to her, her mother-in-law who now was basically free from that relationship. 
She said, no, I don't want to be free. I want to go with you wherever, wherever you go. I want to go wherever you, wherever, you, whatever happens to you. Let my fate be the same as yours. Because she saw the spiritual quality, the spiritual substance that made her unique. And this reason she became part of the children of Israel and from her we know is counted the future descendant of David and the Messiah. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero. Please share this video. Share it to other people that are interested in knowing how to become Jewish. What are the fundamentals of the Jewish faith? And this way you will be blessed. They will be blessed. The whole world will be blessed by knowing more about the one God and how we cleave unto the Torah to receive from the Torah all the blessings that God has, not only for the Jews, not only for the 12 tribes, but for the entire world. Shalom, shalom. Have a wonderful week. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero. And don't forget, your support is a great need in this time of difficulty. So please donate today, Ways of Israel. And you can do so so many different ways. Going to our PayPal account and donating there. Become a member of the Ways of Israel for just a contribution once a year of $100. Or you can donate directly on Zelly. A very easy application. You can go and it will go directly to our account. And I want to thank you and bless you in this morning. And may God be with you and answer your prayers that your heart will be one with the will of our Creator. Shalom, shalom.